This video is part of the series on how to do algebra and it's on adding and subtracting algebraic fractions. Now if you can't add normal fractions, what you might call normal fractions, then there is a video in our um, area on the Maths 520 channel that I recommend you going to watch. Um, I will be introducing the basics very quickly but um, you might want to go and watch that if some fractions is something you struggle with. So let's start off very simply with the concept of a half plus a half. What we're looking for here is how many halves do we have in total? Well, we've got one half in one hand and one half in the other hand. If you add those together, then you will get one whole one, or you get two halves, which is one whole one. So you'll notice what happens here is if the denominators of our fraction are the same, then it's simply the case of adding the numerators because that tells us how many of those types of fraction we have in total. So we have one quarter plus two quarters then we get three quarters. Now if the fractions we start with are different fractions then we can't add them together because we have to work in we have to change these fractions first so that they have the same denominator now we do that by finding the least common multiple in fact we can do it finding any multiple but if we find the lowest or the least common multiple then it will be the easiest um, solution we w the answer will be simplified we won't have to do any simplification so if we looked in the multiples of 2 2 4 6 8 10 and so on and we looked at the first few multiples of 3 3 6 9 and so on you'll see that the lowest common multiple or the least common multiple is 6 so we can change our fractions rather than being halves and thirds we can change the fractions to being sixths and the answer will also be in sixths now we have changed the denominator of the first fraction so we've also got to change the numerator so that the fraction remains the same size. So in order to change that half, or that 2 into a 6, we've multiplied the denominator by 3, so now we're going to multiply the numerator by 3. And on this fraction, because we've changed it from a third to a sixth, we're going to have to multiply by 2, so we're going to have to multiply this numerator by 2. And that is the same then as 5 sixths. So that's the concept we're going to be using in algebraic fractions and it's exactly the same idea some students are taught this idea you cross multi you multiply these two and you cross multiply so you'll get 6 over 3 plus 2 which is 5 over 6 and that will work but it's not always going to give you the simplest answer for instance if we had th 1 third plus 1 ninth we could do that and we'd get 27 over 9 plus 3 which is 12 over 27 which is not incorrect mathematically that's correct what I've done there is I've multiplied these two together and these two together like uh, cross multiply but I don't like to teach like that because what we've done there is we haven't found the lowest or the least common multiple so our answer is more complicated than it needed to have been what we could have done is said well we can change that 3 into a 9 by multiplying by 3 so we could change that to a ninth that's already a ninth and then we can work in ninths now if we times that into 9 we've got to times the top by 3 so we get 3 ninths so that's 4 ninths and if you look this can be cancelled by dividing by the um, a common factor of 3, so if you divide top and bottom by 3 that also becomes 4 ninths. So if you always find the lowest common multiple you don't need to f um, simplify afterwards and that's very important when you're coming on to doing algebraic fractions because algebraic fractions are difficult to simplify so if we can make sure that we don't have to simplify them then it will work. But if you do struggle to find the highest the um, least common multiple you can always resort to this cross multiplying idea. So looking at algebraic fractions then, nice and straightforward to begin with, if we did 1 over x plus 1 over x, I'll look at that fraction and tell me whether or not that denominator is the same. And it is. 
So the answer is going to be over x, and there's going to be 1x plus 1 over x. 1 over x plus 1 over x is going to be 2 over x. Okay. So what about 1 plus x over 1 plus x squared? Look at that and tell me whether those denominators are the same now. Nope, they're not the same now. So we've got to make them the same. Now, I can turn this x into x squared by multiplying it by x, just like we times in the previous example the 3 by 3 to turn it to 9. So I can turn that x into x squared. That x squared is already x squared, so the answer is going to be over x squared. Now, if I times the bottom by x, I have to times the num 1 by x, and then I leave the number on top the same, because I haven't done anything to this x squared other than times by 1, so I can times the top by 1. And so that gives me the answer x plus 1. And that's simplified, that's as simple as we can do it. Now the alternative method here would be the method that lots of people are taught, which is this idea of cross-multiplying. So if we do it that way, you'll see why I prefer to just find the lowest common multiple. What you're going to get is you're going to get x cubed on the bottom, and you're going to get x squared plus x on the top, which you then can factor to get x plus x lots of x plus 1 which then cancels again because you can divide this bottom by x to get x squared, this top by x to get 1, which gives you x plus 1 over x. So you get the same, sorry, x squared. So you get the same answer, but it's more complicated. So don't just apply this cross-multiplying method without giving it some thought. If you can't do it another way, then do it that way, you will get some marks, but often you'll overcomplicate, you'll overcomplicate your question. You don't need to do it that way. Okay, now, um, if you couldn't factorize and simplify at this step, then go away and watch the previous videos, please, because there is quite a long video on how to simplify algebraic fractions. So 1 over AB plus 1 over B equals, try that question, please. In a minute, in a few seconds, I'll show you the answer. So pause the video if you want to do this one. Okay, so I've got to look for the lowest common multiple. Now, can I change that b so that it's a b? Yes, I can, can't I? Because I can multiply this one by a to get a b, which means the fraction can be a b over a b, and the answer can be over a b as well. Now, to get that AB to that AB, I multiply by 1, or I don't do anything to it, so I multiply the first numerator by 1. But times to get this denominator to be AB, I've times by A, so I'm going to times the numerator by A, and I'm left with 1 plus A over AB, or A plus 1 over AB, or A plus 1 over BA. All three of those are correct, so sometimes you may look at your answers. Oh, actually, there's a fourth one as well, isn't there? 1 plus A over B A. So you may get an answer, and you look in the back of the book, or you look at the workings, or you look at your test, and you go, oh, that's not the same as the teacher got, or that's not the same as the book got, so I must be wrong. But you have to think about it. Remember that multiplying doesn't matter which order you do it, and adding it doesn't matter which order you do it. So the numerator and the denominator, in this case, it doesn't matter which way around it is. If that was a subtract, though, you do have to be more careful. Okay, so that's a very basic example, but really, if you can do that one, you can add al algebraic fractions. All that can happen now is that the examiner or the teacher or the question just can make the, it harder. They, we can just make it more complicated. Okay, so here's a more complicated example only just more complicated, but there you go, you've got 2x over y plus x over z. See if you can add those two fractions together, please. Okay, so we're looking for the lowest common multiple, or the least common multiple. Now, there's lots of different multiples of y, lots of different multiples of z, 
but the one that's interesting is the one which contains both the z and the y because I can times the y by z to get yz and I can times the z by y to get yz so I can write that as yz and yz and yz now to get this new denominator to be yz I've had to multiply it by z so I have to multiply this numerator by z so I get 2xz and to multiply this denominator by y to get yz I have to multiply this numerator by y so I get yx Sorry. yeah yx so then I can write the answer as 2xz plus yx and I could leave it like that but always see if something will factorize and you'll notice that there's an x in common on the top so I'm going to write my answer as 2z plus y over yz now there might be a temptation here to try and cancel this y with this y because you've been taught that if there's a, num a letter above and below the line or a number above and below the line you can cross them out but that's not true and as I said there's a video on simplifying algebraic fractions and it's quite long so rather than cover it again here I'd like you to go and watch that but that's as far as this question can go if you can factorize the numerator it's always worth doing that now if we had this as a subtraction question it's exactly the same idea you have to find the lowest common multiple but instead of adding one from the um, fraction you're subtracting one fraction from the other so now you get 2xz on top and um, yx on the numerator of this fraction so you're left with 2xz minus yx over yz this time and if you factor out the x you get 2z minus y over yz so you can see that that's a very um, just went off the page a bit there so I'll give you time to read it again it's exactly the same question but rather than adding I'll subtracting so that's it for the algebraic fractions we can just make them more and more complicated so it's harder and harder to find the lowest common multiple but it's just a case of thinking well what can I do to one denominator to make it look like the other denominator so we're going to go through one more example now and then I'll give you some questions to try OK, so this is a much harder question now, or well, certainly looks a lot harder. And what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can find the lowest common multiple, and then rewrite the fraction with the lowest common multiple, then modify the numerators by ha multiplying by whatever we've multiplied the denominators by, and then finally adding those numerators. Now, before we start any question with um, algebra, algebraic fraction, questions it's well worth seeing if anything factorizes now not so that we can simplify this fraction it's difficult to simplify this fraction or you're not allowed to simplify the fraction if that was multiply you could but we can't start saying well that y can cancel with that y it only works with multiplication this is not this is addition but it does help us manage the terms much easier if they are um, factorized so I'm going to factorize this numerator I'm going to factorize this denominator. Now, be very careful. A lot of students might start trying to cancel things here, but it's not allowed. What we've got to do now, though, is to make a common denominator. Now, looking at these two, I've got to think, well, what can I do to the y to include x lots of x plus 1? And what can I do to the x lots of x plus 1 to include a y? Now, I can do that by multiplying this y by that and this by that. So that is the idea of cross multiplying that I said earlier that I preferred you not to use but in this case that's the way you find the lowest common multiple. So I can rewrite this fraction as y x lots of x plus 1 and I can rewrite this as y x lots of x plus 1. So now I've got a common denominator. It looks very complicated but it, at least it's a common denominator. Now what did I do to the bottom of this fraction, the denominator of this fraction is I've multiplied it by x lots of x plus 1. So I've got to times this numerator by x lots of x plus 1. So that's going to be x times by x 
is x squared and then x plus 2 x plus 1 and I've got to do the same over here. What have I done to this denominator to turn it into y lots of x plus x plus 1? Well, I've times it by y, so I've got to times this numerator by y, so I get y cubed. And I get the answer, x squared, x plus 1, x plus 2, sorry, x plus 1, plus y cubed, over y x, x plus 1. And you may be tempted here to try and cancel some things and say, well, I can cancel that with that and that with that. But again, it doesn't work. It doesn't work like that. You're not allowed to cancel unless this the common factor is every term of the numerator and the common factor is in every term of the denominator. And if we see here, there's a y here. So you might think, well, I can cancel a y, but there's no y in this term of this numerator. Again, there's a video on that on, uh, on our area. Oh, it maths 520, so go and watch that if you want to cancel that further. Okay, so that's a harder question. Okay, now see if you can do this question. We will go through it in a minute, and then I'll set you some questions at the end that you can try. But let's try this one first. Don't try and cancel anything yet, you're not allowed to, you just got to try and find the common or the least common denominator. Right, well, you may have been tempted to multiply these two together, but there's no need to multiply these two together. That won't find you the lowest. It will find you a multiple, a common multiple, but it won't find you the least or the lowest. I've got to think, how can I change that 2 to a 4? Well, I can double it. How can I include a y here? Because there's a y there. Well, I can times by y. And then i got that as my new denominator. So that's the denominator I'm going to have to have on this side as well. Now I've changed the order of my x and my y's there, and it doesn't matter because it doesn't matter which order you multiply in. Okay, so y x is same as x y, so don't panic that I've changed the order of those two. Now, what did I do to my denominator? Well, I times my denominator by two y's because it was two, so I've doubled the two, and I've also multiplied by y. So I've got to multiply the numerator by 2y's. So I get 2y squared. And on this one I multiply by x lots of x plus 1. So I have to multiply the top by x lots of x plus 1. And the x lots of x gives me x squared and that's times by x plus 1. Okay, now if you start cancelling these individual fractions what you'll end up with is this. So don't cancel these <laughs> fractions, as I said, because you don't want to end up back here again. Right, now we finally finish off the question. We have a common denominator for x, y, lots of x plus 1. And I add the numerators together and I get 2y squared plus x squared lots of x plus 1. Now that could be in a different order. I could have done the x squared lots of x plus 1. Now, if you cross multiplied, you will have an 8 here, a 4 here, and a 2 here. And you'd have to factor out that 2 and then cancel it down. So you've got one more step until you get to the more simple version. So if you cross multiply, if you did that times by that, and then you did that times by that, and that times by that, you would have got the correct answer eventually, but after one more step of work. And that one step of work you may have got wrong. Okay, so let's not introduce complications just to make them um, when you don't need to. Okay, now I do want to do one more example because this is an example which looks quite straightforward but a lot of students make a mistake on it. We've got 1 plus 1 over x. So the first thing I want you to do is to change that, fact, that 1 into a fraction. Now we can change any whole number into a fraction by writing it over 1. So now we've got 1 over 1 plus 1 over x. Now we have to think about well, how do we get common denominators. Well, I can make that an x and an x. And now if I multiplied my, my denominator by x, I've got to times my, nu my numerator by x. And I told my denominator by 1, I've, it's the same number, so I times by nu my numerator by x. So I'm left with x plus 1 over x, or 
1 plus x over x. It doesn't matter. So if you had that either of those two, then you've got the right answer. So don't worry. Okay. So some of the ones that look more straightforward are the ones that students mess up because they forget that you can turn any whole number into a fraction. So now it's the time for you to do some questions on your own and then once you've done the questions you can start the video again and I'll show you the answers. Okay, five questions this time. Um, remember that subtraction is exactly the same as addition except obviously we, once you've got the denominators the same you subtract the numerators rather than add them. Okay, I'm going to go through the answers then. So if you haven't had a chance to, just rewind the video and pause it, and then you can work through the answers with me. It's much you're going to get much more out of it if you just don't watch, you actually get involved. You learn mathematics by doing mathematics, not by watching it. Okay, so we're going to start with x over y plus 2, and now we're going to have to try and make the denominators the same. Now don't forget that 2 is the same as 2 over 1. So I can write this as x over y plus something over y. Now, if I've multiplied the denominator by y, or I'm going to have to multiply my numerator by y. Now, I didn't do anything to my denominator here. Um, well, you could think about it as I've multiplied it by 1 to keep it the same. So I've multiplied my numerator by 1 to keep it the same. So my answer to question 1 is x plus 2y over y. Or 2y plus x over y. It doesn't matter which way round that is. So if you got that one right, well done. If you didn't, then either watch the video again, and if you still don't understand, come and see me. I'm available at any lunchtime in the maths office or in any of the rooms in the maths department. Question 2 then. We've got to change the denominators. So, I, in this example, I can think about cross multiplying, but I can think, well, what do I do to include a y in my denominator here? Well, I can multiply the b by y, and I can multiply that y by b, and now I've got the same denominator. So, what if I did to my denominator, I have to do to my numerator. So, if I've multiplied this denominator by y, I've got to multiply this numerator by y, and I get a y. And if I times this one by b, I have to times this numerator by b, so I get bx or xb. It doesn't matter which way round you write the multiplication. So that means the answer is ay plus bx over by. And don't be tempted to cancel that. You can only cancel things if this common factor is in every term of the numerator and the denominator. If you cancelled here, you would have ended up back with the original question. So be careful not to go in circles. Question 3. This is an example to show you why cross-multiplying isn't always the best thing to do. I've got to think about how I can modify my denominator so that they're the same. Well, I've got a 2a here and just 1a there. So I can double this one. So I can keep this one as 2a. So the numerator stays the same, and I can double this denominator, so I can double this numerator. So I'm left with 3 over 2a. Now if you had cross-multiplied, you would have got something a lot more complicated, but would have cancelled to um, 3 over 2a. In fact, I'll show you that, just, just in case you did it that way. You would have got a plus 2a over 2a squared then you would have to factor out the a which would be 1 plus 2 or sorry you could have just said a plus 2a is 3a and then these one of these a's cancels to leave you 3 over 2a okay. so you can see it was a lot more complicated than just finding the lowest common multiple so always look for the lowest common multiple. Question 4. Again, the first thing I'm going to do before I start my fraction problem is just see if I can actually make any of my um, 
terms in my well any of my numerators to den denominators easier by factorizing and I can factorize this one so I'm going to factorize it because factored forms normally are easier to deal with and you'll see what I mean in a minute now don't be tempted to cancel you can't but what we can do is now we can look for a common denominator so the lowest common denominator in this case is going to be y lots of x plus 1 and y lots of x plus 1 now I've times this side by x plus 1 this denominator so I'm going to have to times this numerator by x plus 1 so x plus 1 times by x plus 1 is going to give me x plus 1 squared now if I didn't factorize that numerator first then I would have had something more complicated there and I might not have multiplied it properly and on this side I'm times by y for my denominator so I'm going to have to times this numerator by y so I'm left with x lots of x plus 1 all squared plus y cubed over y lots of x plus 1 and finally question 5 well this looks really quite complicated this one so I'm going to write it out again and there are a couple of things that people make a mistake on they might say well look, there's a a there so if I if I times that by minus one and then plus a but you're not allowed to plus things to numerators or denominators you have to multiply or divide the numerator and denominator by the same thing so what I want you to think about is this a minus b is a, a, is a number put it in a bracket so I'm going to have to multiply this denominator by the whole of that number and I'm going to have to times this denom denominator by b Okay, so that's how I've got my lowest common multiple this time now I've times this denominator by the a minus b so I'm going to multiply this numerator but notice how I put it in a bracket first because I'm times the whole of that numerator by the whole of a minus b so it's a double bracket multiplication and I'm going to times this numerator by the b so I get that so that leaves me with the answer of 2x minus a lots of a minus b minus yb or by now I could multiply that double bracket out there and I could multiply that one out there but it's just going to make the question more complicated than it needs to be if possible you factorize algebra so if it's already been factorized leave it factorized don't multiply brackets out unless you absolutely have to okay so there's the five questions well the five answers to the five questions if you don't understand any, any of those or if you need more help on that you know where I, where I am at lunchtime